True Footy Podcast 29. It's good to all be together again, the original gang. I think this is the first time we've been together since November. Yeah. Wow. Since the draft. Um, probably our worst ever podcast too, but we don't have to. Stop <laughs> saying <laughs> <laughs> the we common denominator is Louis. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> no I'm just kidding. But the ch- the channel, I reckon, has almost tripled since we have done that podcast because it's been a very, very big summer. Um, We've even got trolls now. We yeah. do, yeah, we do. Which is uh, it comes with the territory. It's quite flattering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I just, I just love it. Um, cool boys. So we're on the virtually the eve of season 2019. Um, so. Rather than go into a full like season preview podcast, I think we did that last year, um, which is just so diffuse. There's so many things, different things to talk about. Um, why don't we? Actually, I think it was Bush's idea. I was going to state. I it. stole it from ESPN. I thought it was going to be. Yeah. I was going to state it as my idea, but it wasn't. I think it was Bush's idea, um, and we'll, I think we should compile twenty players that, as a group, we're all very excited to see in 2019. It doesn't necessarily mean. Um, no, it's not the best players. It's just weird. players we're looking forward to watching during whether during they're in the a new season. place or yeah. getting a new role that sort of thing you're excited to see or just yeah. think they'll go to the next level yeah that sort of thing yeah yep so if we I think we divide it up by five players each that we can go through um, and make it the true footies top 20 to watch in 2019 yeah. so no particular order how are we doing this yeah in no order one at a time or I think one at a time yeah. Joyce, so why don't you kick us off Okay. Um, with your five players, um, with a bit of an explanation now. why um, you're excited to see them play. Oh, so do all five or one yeah, just, time? just rattle us through it. All right. Rattle first off it. the list, I talked about him in my um, dreams, in my predictions, and in my dreams. <laughs> uh, Lockie Whitfield. Mm. Um, yeah, for me, the best. <laughs> <laughs> um, crazy, for me, the best. Uh, <laughs> For me, the best halfback flanker in the game right now, Lockie Whitfield. Um, I think he's really good through the middle as well. I think I mentioned in the predictions video, I think he could go to the next level in 2019 and become an elite player. So he is my first player to watch for 2019. Future star of the Hawthorne Football Club, you might say. <laughs> That's do what they say him, about uh, every GWS player. Though. Do you see him playing more midfield yeah. minutes this year, do you think, Whitfield, with Shield gone and... Possibly, although Taranto looks That's like true. he's definitely stepped into that role. Um, but I think he's more than capable. I think he's really good in lots of positions, yeah. yeah. He's surprisingly good for how skinny he is. Like, you yeah. look at him and you think he'd get wrecked in a contest, but he doesn't Yeah, for some true. reason. And the, the halfback flank is a really important position in the modern game, isn't it? So when you have Lockie Whitfield, who's one of the better rebounding defenders in the game, yeah. um, maybe don't rob Peter to pay Paul. That you might say. Mm, I've yeah. heard they say. Cut off your nose and spike your face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's good. Oh, big boy. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky Why did I say that? <laughs> <laughs> I've been out of the game a while. You, like, you thought you were going to slip under the radar. Who you're excited to see? Big boy McAvoy? Big boy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just jump in too early. Okay, uh, number, number two on my players to watch is Isaac Heaney. Um, absolute gun of the competition, one of the premier half forwards, um, sort of the opposite to Lockie Whitfield. He rotates midfield and half forward. Although from looking at JLT, I think it's entirely possible we could see a lot of midfield minutes out of him this year. I think he's pretty all-rounded, really good user, kicks goals, good at the contest, yeah, Really great player, and yeah, looking forward to seeing him play this year. Hard, it's hard to uh, believe he's still only what turning twenty three this year, yeah. and he's better than a lot of players yeah. who were more developed yeah. than him. Yeah, absolute steal with a late first or whatever Sydney got him for through the academy. Yeah, yeah. very true, very true. Yeah, free yeah, academy remind us of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. All right, good nomination so far. Keep going. Number three. Um, Chucked a bit of a Frio one in there for myself, um, but I think um, also deserved Jesse Hogan, um, mainly for the move. Um, everyone knows he's got loads of potential. Um, Frio have been crying out for a forward uh, for a long time, um, and I think, yeah, he could definitely be a huge, huge impact for Frio. So, yeah, he's also... He's number three on my players to watch. Nice. It's pretty... Um it's going to be particularly interesting to see how he goes at Fremantle, like you say, who haven't had a real big key forward um, since, I guess, Pav. 
and it's been a real list weakness, so that could change yeah. quite a lot. Jesse for Hogan him. isn't a very tall, big marking key position player, though. I guess he does play like one, but yeah. he did also have a pretty bad season last year at Melbourne for his potential and expectations. He kicked 47 goals in like 20 games last season. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mr. Facts. <laughs> Oh, All right, Mr. Game. Big. Damn, <laughs> damn empirical evidence. Did he, did he wasn't playing their last few rounds. He was he? injured, though. Yeah. Was he injured? Yeah. I thought he didn't. I think he played a few games in the VFL. I'm pretty sure he had like a Before foot injury. Was he injured? Well. Drug ban. Ah. ah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Calf problems. Yeah, calf. <laughs> Snorted <laughs> one too many Jordan to goes, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought Melbourne really went with the Tom McDonald's sort of the key forward. Well, I think through. that's why yeah. they probably let him go in the end. So I think. And Weedham. And yeah. coming for as well. He I think good. there's there has been a few questions about his attitude. Jesse Hogan as well, possibly another reason they ended up l- letting him go to Frio. I've seen um, a few pictures of him so far this off season, enjoying his time back in Perth. Let's put it that way. Yeah, <laughs> why not? But I, I sort of I think like uh, there's not really a correlation between how someone behaves off the field and how good of a player they are. Really like. Ben Cousins was the best player in the competition and he was doing drugs for a good 10 years mm. like we're not saying that's what Jesse Hogan's doing though. no 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 <laughs> no I'm not <laughs> saying that's what he is at all but <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm saying I don't think you need to live like a priest yeah, sure. to be a gun at all mm. yeah you gotta have a bit of a hu- yeah. attitude about you to be good at sports mm. yeah yeah number four on my list uh, is Angus Brayshaw um, second or third in the Brown low, I think third, third yeah. yeah, and didn't even attend. Um, what a dog. He's an absolute gun, I reckon. Yeah. S- could slightly imp- improve his ball use. If he does improve that ball use, there's not much separating him from the best of the best in the competition. Um, mm, yeah, and because. he's yeah. missed a lot, a lot of football as well, so... He's probably only really put together, what, True. two or three full seasons. He, he started the year out of Melbourne's best 22, yeah. um, which is incredible for a guy who came top three in the Brown, though. Yeah. Um, so, yep, he's, there's no doubt he's on my list. Number five <laughs> is uh, Luke Shuey. Oh. Um, I've put, the devil. I've put Shuey, yes, the devil himself. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, oh, yeah. Say Mary. yeah. <laughs> go into the bathroom, close the door, and say Luke Shuey three times in the mirror. <laughs> I um, love Luke Shuey. I'm just I'm not endorsing this. Um, I actually like him. I I realised I was wrong when I disliked him. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I've yeah. come to like him. I'm not After like all him. of last year, I think he's actually risen in my books. So, and yeah. Gaff has probably replaced him. Like, I'm, <laughs> honestly, it's the way Shuey handled fair. the Gaff situation that made me come to realise, yeah, he's a good dude. And, mm. Yeah, I like him now. Yeah. I agree. I he's on my that. once to watch list because... In prison. I think he's... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> once to watch like... I don't even know what that means. <laughs> 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 No, but uh, he stole that Norm Smith off Dom Shea. I think yeah. his no, grand final no, was the best game I've ever seen him play. Yeah, and I don't think he's been the most consistent player over his career. I think he's he's always good when he plays, but when you see him play like that, you think you, if you could play like that every week, you would be an Just absolute about, gun. Yeah. yeah, so I know he's capable of playing like that. Um, I think maybe with the grand final in him like that, sometimes that's the thing a player needs to just sort of relax a bit, no more pressure, and can really, yeah, let go, let loose. As a West Coast fan, as a big game player, personally, I think he's had some great um, great games when we beat GWS. Yeah, I think he's been a real leader in that midfield. Um, There was the... God, I mean, mind blank. Where's the game against JUS oh, this year, yeah. the year before? I think nah, when Nanu kicked the goal. Yeah, when Nanu kicked the goal, a massive, massive game then dragged us back into that. And when we got beaten by the Western Bulldogs in the finals 2016, again, he was probably the only player for us that was actually trying to pull us like, across mm. the line of those games. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Uh, but Joyce makes a good point. There's a lot of times where he... Um, I think the inconsistency came from not being able to handle the tag, personally. Yeah. Um, so think, And we were a pretty bad team there for quite a while in the, in the midfield. Yeah. But with a lot, not, not a lot of accountability, I think, especially yeah. when we had... He's always... You've got more options as well yeah, now, which you frees him up more. You've got like guys like Yo, Redden, Sheed. He's always been, until probably the grand final, he was always one of those guys that was... M- a lot higher rated in-house than he was by 
Yeah. The opposition fans. Yeah, definitely. Good call. Um, yeah, but yeah, that's my yeah. five. Yeah, right. Well done. I like that list. That's good. Money, well researched, mate. Yeah, it was. It was very well presented. Uh-oh. How about yourself, Bush? Well, well, you're next. So <laughs> it's <just> grown. <laughs> <laughs> well, my first cab off the ranks, Tim Kelly. Okay. So I'm interested to see how he goes after all the trade controversy and everything. I want to see if he goes if can improve on his first year where he was outstanding. Whether Geelong give him as much of an opportunity to play, where considering they might be like they'll still play him, obviously, but whether they play him in a crucial role considering whether they not sure whether they can hold on to him okay yeah that's sort of something sure yep. cool nice one yeah another one i'd be interested in i've, I've got two guys i've picked picked for this list actually but are both injured now which is a, and won't play around one unfortunately but i'm still excited to see them this season yep. first one of those guys is joey danaher yeah he's looked outstanding when healthy but good call he's struggled to stay in the park a little bit at times but when he's out there he's an absolute jet yeah and he'll go a long way towards people's essendon dreams <laughs> like I don't know like yeah but there's people that say I'm going how do you know about those <laughs> but, but the people that say them being ridiculously high if they're going to be ridiculously yeah. high on the ladder they're going to need down to her to be season. you're right exactly yeah. he's got that Buddy Franklin almost potential wouldn't say Buddy Franklin potential because he's probably one of the different best players we've ever seen to an extent yeah, down to tall a bit more yeah I think Do you reckon that? No. Oh, he's tall. Dan Hurst's huge, right. aren't he? He's yeah. like 202, 203 yeah. or something. he's 198, I think, but you're right. Yeah. I forgot how tall Dan Hurst is. Yeah, Dan Hurst's huge. Skinny, but huge. I think mm. you've nailed that selection. Yeah, yeah. yeah. well yeah. done. Thank you. Another one, I, like Joycey, I've had to pick a docker. Coincidentally, my favourite docker, actually. Oh, Connor coincidence. Blake, <laughs> Connor Blakely. But I've got logic to consolidate this, of course. With the loss of Lockie sure, Neal, so. Blakely was the guy. I've said it before on the podcast. He was the one I was eyeing off to step into that role. <laughs> Even earlier in his year when he had a crack in the midfield, he didn't speak. (laughs) Even earlier in his career when he had a crack in the midfield, he had some outstanding games, even as a tagger and just as a ball getter. So I was really looking forward to seeing him just jump in there from round one and take the Lockie Neal role and run with it. But unfortunately, we're going to have to wait a few more weeks for that one. How far off is he? I'm not too sure. I've, I've heard. First half of the season, I think. Maybe first quarter, even. Yeah, Yeah, I I think I heard six weeks. yeah. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Good, good shout. Yep. I'm trying to think, who else did I have? <laughs> I'll have to, I had the list. I'll have to look this up. One was a Carlton up and comer. Walsh, the number one pick. <laughs> obviously, everyone wants to see the number one pick. Yeah, yeah. it's a pretty safe one. He's looked very good in JLT, so you think he can slide right in around one and maybe get an early rising star and be a serious contender to take it at the end of the year. Yep. Nice. What do you have? Like great hope for Carlton. Yeah. Every year they take yeah. a good first round pick. <laughs> Did he have like 28 posies, I think, in JLT1? Yeah, yeah, he had a real big yeah. game. Yep, cool. And I've yeah. got to look up who my final one is unless you've got it in front of Yeah, you. I do. Um, yes. I wrote it down. Yeah. It was Alex Rance. Oh, yeah, exactly. Alex Rance. He's, oh, the reasoning why is because the rule changes. He's traditionally been a guy that's sort of loose in defence, picks off. But now that that's one-on-one out of the centre bounces and stuff, he's going to be more accountable. And he was definitely exposed last year in one-on-one contests. Prelim, case in point, Mason Cox tore him to shreds. Yep. Mm-hmm. Even throughout the year, I think he had a big total kicked on him in terms of Buddy's, of buddy's torn him up a few times. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, Buddy can tear yeah. anyone up, but yeah. he seems to really, really like going it's, against Rance. It's one of those ones you could see guys like Rance, those more loose defenders, maybe take a lesser role and more the traditional shutter guy down like a Phil Davis, Alex Pierce, but just sticks on their man, doesn't yeah. necessarily do much That's else. It's a good shot. Relish a bit more there with the... Well, we'll probably get into the rule changes a bit more as we go yep. through Speaking that. of Backman, do you think the 1v, the the more 1v1 duels that we're going to see, is that is that going to negate the third man up a little bit? The sort of Jeremy McGovern sort of role come come yeah. over a market. They, now it's more like you have to be responsible yeah, for yeah. a man. I guess if, you, if it's 6, like a 6, six, six if you, like, if you're putting two players that are playing in front of a big forward, you're having someone run free, I guess. Yeah, that's exactly. The opposition, which I, I, people do play, like, teams do play that style, but I think it's just a lot more accountability now with these new changes. Oh, it's pretty interesting. Chatting to a friend who's an Eagles fan, one who could probably look good in this rules is Tommy Barras. He's good at, you know, one-on-one contests. Yeah, he can I like a man. He can do that sort of stuff as well, so he could potentially thrive as an yeah. honourable mention. Yeah, no. To make me look, look not not look like a complete <laughs> Eagles hater. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think the uh, the whole f- um, flooding back kind of thing remains to be seen how the effect it really has because um, you know as soon as there's like the first uh, and first stoppage, then it can flood back. So um, you'll probably still see guys like Rance McGovern and yeah, I guess Brass. Um, 
being able to play that intercept role. But I, I guess that Barras can play one on one. Yeah, yeah, I gotcha. Yeah, that's yeah. what I said. That's where you'd see improvement from him in one on ones. Like there'll be more of them. Cool. Yeah, nice. Thank you. All right, Louis. Uh, how about you hit us with your five? All right. Who am I going with? What have I got here? <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> Tom Monaghan. Is, <laughs> <laughs> is he still playing? <laughs> Taylor Dumas. Is he? Is he? No. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What have I got? Taylor Adams. I'm gonna like be a bit cross on this man. I'm yeah, right. Coming up, comes up a few times. This is a My football list. Oh, oh <laughs> not the most attractive. Interesting looking man. Yeah, okay. <laughs> this guy's shot that. <laughs> Tell him. No, oh, big boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just let me speak. <laughs> so, go on. So I thought he had like a, oh, again, he had a great, great, great grand final. And I think, uh, I think with Collingwood's kind of running from, yeah, with the motivation they had last year and, yeah, yeah, towards that this year, especially Penderbury and Sidebottom maybe not being having as big roles. Maybe not as big roles. But I think Penderbury kind of wasn't as influential in the Collingwood Midfield yeah, you're right. last year. I think Taylor Adams is probably ready to come in and step up in yeah. a really leadership role yeah. in that middle. Um, yeah, I, I keep thinking back about how he almost won the North Smith and there was thought this was a bloody fantastic, fantastic game. Um, yeah, that's cool. yeah, that's all I have. I agree. But again, he did. Um, he has. He's injured. He as is well. injured. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he's out for the first two rounds. Yeah, um, that's all right. With a finger, I think. But I, yeah, it's not much. But, yeah, it's not, for it's a team that's going to play finals as well. Exactly. He has play. played I think twenty three games last season, twenty two the the season before. So he's relatively durable. That's yeah. a good research. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Stats. Yeah. Statistics. Statistics. Jazz aside. Stephen May. I thought I've actually, I like I've actually got both co captains. Oh, uh, they're more well, old go co captains. Joe Viney as well. No, no he's sick of time. Oh, Joe Viney would be good. But Joe <laughs> didn't have him. <laughs> I haven't done the research. <laughs> yeah, so that's Stephen May because I thought. Uh, it'd just be interesting to see how his role at Melbourne with a bit more scrutiny on it perhaps yeah. uh, instead of being True. at Gold Coast where I thought is yeah, still I mean I don't think anyone at Gold Coast was particularly accountable I think yeah like in terms of I don't think a lot of scrutiny was on these players because of oh, Gold Coast is you're right oh, yeah it's like he can only do so much with what's around him you can't blame yeah, him yeah but now he's got yeah. a lot more scrutiny on it's not an excuse Melbourne. anymore yeah. Oh, yeah definitely um, and again he's already lost Round one through MRP as well. So yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the first week, and then Tom Lynch, of course, is uh, dead Richmond now. Yeah. And I think again, I think with these rule changes are going to really, which I think I'll talk about a bit more about later, um, will really help the big, tall marking forwards. I think, uh, especially with the, from what I've seen in JLT, my with a lot of midfielders having a bit more time and space to hit targets, and I think Tom Lynch is just going to have a fantastic year. Um, just well being in a at a, probably a top four team Richmond compared to being at Gold Coast yep. I think it would just it should have yeah ball on platter basically and should be yeah should just really really have a good year nice yeah and I've actually written here's a big big boy in my notes <laughs> <laughs> gotta scratch that out now <laughs> big boy <laughs> spot is enough and Jordan Clark I thought it was super impressive against yeah. uh, West Coast in nice. uh, round one. I think he ended up with 20 odd, 20 odd disposals and just like a lot of rebounding. Um, yeah, rebounding off that half back. And bloody fast. I didn't realise it was, it was him until, yeah, probably half time. I was like, who the bloody is this bloke? He's just, just sprinting, yeah. man. Incredible. And he's also, and he also had a good game uh, against the Dons as well, I thought. That was also really good. And then uh, Chris Scott suggested that he's probably a certain. Probably a certain. He is more than likely a round one start. Yeah, no. Nice. You said it's going to be hard to see any other awesome. players push him out of that position, which is, yeah. He had glandular fever when the draft happened as well, and people were thinking that might oh, affect nice. his draft position. So good on Geelong for taking the punt. Taking the punt, yeah. And uh, well, he's obviously fit and ready to go. So. Yeah, I think he's really shined in that in those two games that he's played. Like just really ready to go, slot into that position and go with it. Basically. <laughs> That's how you like him, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Please sponsor the True Footy Podcast. <laughs> We're brand friendly. Um, yeah, cool. Is that is that five? I can't remember. That's four, you, you... I think. Stop trying to cut me off early. I'm struggling. I know, but like... <laughs> no, 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 I, I lost track. Got four in there. Yeah, you got four in here. Did you have a fifth one? Well, uh, Tex Walker. Oh, okay. Yeah, I I no Interesting. Him, yeah, yeah, normally so, people don't want to see him. <laughs> 
<laughs> or is that just me? Hey? I said no, most no. people don't want to watch him play. Really? I love watching Tex Walker oh, play. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm not a fan. Such a character. Yeah, yeah you character. do like your characters, don't you? I do, yeah. I yeah. think sport doesn't have enough, to be honest. Especially AFL. But go yeah. on, Louis. <laughs> well, Jack Higgins is a you reckon? Yeah. yeah. I don't mind. I honestly don't. I, I don't pretty like him as well, to be honest. I think it was the mullet, to be honest. Yeah, it could be something as stupid as that what? mullet. Yeah, yeah that, was that would make you like him more, wouldn't nah, it? I'm not a big fan nah, of mullets. Like nah, yeah, you really aren't, are you? No. Yeah, we, you I've heard you read about mullets oh, before, man. actually. It's just like, no. <laughs> no, that is not good. Why? Stop trying to make Trigger me timbers. <laughs> anyway, I did have him as my fifth. Because um, I thought, again, as uh, Captain Adelaide, I thought he had a really bad year last year. Yeah. Really, really bad year. Um, I actually did do some research, got some stats <laughs> as well. So he's, yeah. All right, moving on. 20, <laughs> 26 goals in 2018, which is yeah. actually the second lowest I think he's ever had since debuting. Yeah, right. Um, that is a pretty Well, besides 2013 when he did his knee, I think. So mm-hmm. I guess third. But in, since that's. Not good, not where you want one from your captain. I mean, it's a tumultuous year badly last year, but it needs someone to leave from the front, and Tex Walker wasn't really there. He had some horrible games that entire year. Mm-hmm. But um, tipping Adelaide to do to come back strong this year, and I think he will hopefully well be a big part of that. Yeah, right. That's my, nice. That's my view. Yeah. Cool. Good list. Good list. All right, Jesse, on to your five. Five list. Watch. Five list. Hit us uh, with number one. Who you got? Uh, first of all, it's a player that I've mentioned several times this preseason, but I'm going to really ram it home. And that's Tom Rockliffe, because I think a lot of people have kind of written him off since he went to Port. Yep. Uh, missed a lot of the preseason last year due to a groin injury. And I think as a result, played a fair bit forward, didn't really get the, the touches that we are so used to him getting, um, so to speak. And now that he's fit, he's proven himself a bit in the JLT2. He had 41 possessions at a DT score of 178. And um, the only limiting factor on him will be the fact that Port rotate their mids and forwards a bit. So it's he and someone like Boak and Ebert, they can all play forwards. So um, provided he spends a bit of time in the middle, I think he could be have a big season. Mm. Okay. He did have pretty limited impact last year, but he, as he said, he basically played in a forward pocket. He did have a few good games last year when they he actually did. put him in there. The very yeah, to pre-season. That's true. But I think he really kind of had to build that conditioning as opposed yeah. to... Yeah. He didn't have the pre-season to work. I think yeah. he kicked two goals three, I was saying, as well, didn't he? As well, alongside the 40 possessions. Possibly. They will explain that. how he got to 178. I can't, I can't actually remember. Um, the next one I have is Tim Taranto, who I think you kind of mentioned earlier, Joycey. Yeah. Um... Absolute gun, I reckon. I've said before, I think him and Pal Pepper were the best two players from the 2016 draft, in my opinion. Number one and two. And, um, well, I'd say At the time, or you think that now? I thought that at the time. I thought that at the time. And I still think it could come true. And I think Durant could prove to be pick one. Definitely. Uh, Sorry, like worthy of being pick one that year. And um, last year, he averaged 20 possessions and six tackles a game. And had a couple of 30 possession games, which is pretty good for a guy in his second season. And with a bit more time in the midfield with Shield gone, I can really see him um, becoming a you know, 25 possession a game player. Third player up is Dom Sheed, another player I've mentioned previously because I had him in my dream team in our fantasy podcast. But last five games of last year, 29.4 disposal average and three of those were finals and obviously that massive grand final he had. Preseason so far, he's had 38 and 40 possession games. And regardless of whether Gaff's in the side or not, I think he's, his form is here to stay. And I think he's going to become an important player for the West Coast midfield. Yeah. Who do you reckon, do you think he pushes someone out? Or do you think he, it was a player that, say, like Venables that starts with interchange, mm. they might lose their spot? I don't really know how the mix is going to work. I know that, well, in JLT, they've had the full compliment. I guess, mm. I guess Shui and Yo were on limited minutes. So yeah. That could be a factor, but with Sheed playing so well, I don't think they're going to cut down his, his minutes too much. Definitely. I mean, yeah. it's hard to with someone in that form, basically. Yeah. I think Redden could be someone they move. Um, Sheed's not very versatile either. It's not like you can really chuck him in a forward pocket. He's kind very of got true. to be midfield or nothing. Very true. And I think that's probably why he had a form slump last year, because he was pushed out to a flank. Um, and as you say, he's not quite suited to that, that role. Number four on my list is another draftee. Um, and in my opinion the early contender f- with Sam Walsh for the Rising Star, and that's Zach Butters, had a really good preseason, 
uh, 25 possessions in one game and three goals in the other for Port Adelaide. Oh. And I think he's just he's a really smooth mover, um, really crafty outside player. And I think those guys um, are well suited to doing well in their first season because they don't have to rely on their contested game. And because he's such a good player, um, he can play well and play a role for a side straight away. So I'm going to say watch out for him. I feel like he'll be um, a well-known name by the end of the year. Okay. Okay. And number five is someone called Brennan Cox. I think you guys might have heard of him, being Fremantle fans. I'm going to put him on my list. Uh, you don't, don't know who he is, mate. Don't have, <laughs> don't have the foggiest clue. Yeah. I think he's actually a player that's a little bit underrated by the broader AFL community. Just, And I don't really blame him because he was like, what, pick 43 and... Hasn't played that much. Yeah, he's, he got a Rising Star nomination last year, but I think um, I think he's actually one of the better talents at Fremantle and he can play equally well at up forward or down back. He's, he's injured at the moment, right? Yeah. For a month? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. everyone's injured except that's how McCraft, that's the picture we posted last night, that's how McCraft yeah, is right. slipping into the side. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We're um, into memes now. Yep. Though, so. So I was pretty proud of that game, one, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Whether he goes forward or back or if he's a swingman, I think he is a very good player. And um, hopefully he gets on the park this year because I think more people will know his name by the end of the year than they do now. So that's my five. Nice. Ooh. I like it. Very nice. Ooh. Awesome. Oh, hey, yeah. <laughs> 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 cool. Thanks, all right. Dumbledore. Yeah, well done. Yes, well done, Slytherin. Well done, Slytherin. However. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So, we have a lot of questions from our Discord community. Um, I do love getting the questions from the Discord community. It makes yep. the podcast about 10 times more interesting. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's perfect. It's having on our own podcast. But uh, no, it does. It makes it good fun. And um, we love all the contributions. So if you're not a member of the Discord already, um, hit up the invite code in the description as long as you're not a troll because we've had a massive influx of trolls lately. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it's a good way to keep in touch. Fan engagement. Yeah. <laughs> Negative. Yeah, it's at breaking point. Um, <laughs> so we've got a number of questions on the docket so what I'm going to do is rather than everyone have a crack at all the questions because we simply don't have time we'll just go uh, one by one and have a crack at any questions so first up is a question from Bruce a fellow Fremantle fan Busher and I'll direct this question at you he says that Damien Barrett has suggested that elite players like Fife and Dustin Martin should be paid far more than a million a year um, as what they're currently paid and he suggests that eight to ten million is probably more worthy. Do you agree with the statement, Daniel Busher? I got to say, when I first saw Barrett say that, my eyes did light up, and I sort of had some thoughts, and I kind of did do a bit of reading. So I was really happy when Bruce asked that question because it actually gave me a chance to talk about something I actually sort of looked into a little bit for once, which is good. <laughs> Don't admit that. <laughs> no, I do look into other stuff, but this is something I've looked into in even more depth than I usually do. Cool. That's more what I was I hinting so. at, but because. As everyone sort of knows, I've kind of hinted on it on occasion. I'm a bit of a basketball fan, so I sort of went, because I know there's a, there was recently with the NBA, there was the collective bargaining agreement, and I was com- wanted to compare with the AFLs just to see, because that's how they decide how much players are paid. So I actually looked it up, and for the AFL, their current collective bargaining agreement deal says the players get about 28% of the revenue generated from football, roughly. That's, it's not the precise, there's a few more things that go into it, but it's about 28%. That seems to be the figure. So whatever money, they base the salary cap on that and projections and probably similar to the NBA, keep some, yeah, it's a complicated system. But compared to the NBA, the players over there get 51% of the revenue. So you could definitely say that there is a lot of scope for the AFL players to be paid more, especially compared to comparable professional sports, even though the American League's obviously on a much larger scale. But still, there is a lot more scope for the players to get that 28% up into the 40s, 50s. That's 50, incredible. 50 Sorry yeah. to interrupt, but it's that's incredible double. considering how few players are on a basketball roster yeah. compared to AFL. What's AFL close to 40, 40, 446 counting yeah, category yeah, Bs or something? I think yeah. the most damning thing is the fact that the CEO of the AFL gets paid more than any player in the AFL. Um, that's that's pretty yeah. average in my opinion. Really? Yeah. I mean, what, I'm interested in why you think that's unfair. Well, I think that's not fair because yeah, the best you know the best player in the AFL is going to have so much more influence on bringing in people to the AFL than the CEO is. Um, I think on, on another thing, like if if at the moment they're getting twenty five percent and that the top players are getting paid one mil, to suggest that they should get paid eight to ten mil, that's like 
that that'd be two hundred percent. Like that that doesn't make sense, really. Exactly. So it, to a certain aspect, I think the players are getting paid as a reflection of how much money is in the AFL. And when you compare the AFL to like the Premier League or the NBA, of course the players aren't going to be earning the same amount of money. Um, as just as to as just as to as yeah, yeah. Re- rebut that argument. Yeah. Like I'd be, oh, so you I'll just say, I do agree with Barrett saying there is scope for the players to make more, obviously based on these figures, but maybe not the figures he's throwing out at this stage. If the league grows considerably, possibly down the line when the league's capable of pumping that sort of revenue, but I guess it all comes down yeah. to TV rights. Again, exactly, it, is where the money is for all these. Yeah, that's why there was the big jump in the players' pay because they signed a new TV deal. Uh-huh. Yeah, so that's why there's still been a big jump. I think uh, NBA players with sponsorship agreements and things like that would just be earning absolute stupid money yeah. Yeah. through that. But then they are still getting 51% of all the income and TV league, rights yeah. from the league, which is, yeah, I don't know how that... It's surprising as well, considering you'd say America is more of a like where business owners and that sort of yeah. thing have a strong share, like where Australia is a real worker... Definitely, country like yeah, we've got a workers-based yeah. culture where we want to take their workers. finances at all each year. Is that something you can look into? I mean, they're not on the stock exchange or anything, so I guess I've can't got remember. some figures in front of me. It reckons one point eight four billion is the minimum total value of the collective bargaining agreement between twenty seventeen and twenty twenty two. So I'm not sure if that's annual, if that's that means how much they're paying players over those in total over those four years. The value of the agreement. So I think that's sort of like maybe the total revenue of the league per year, possibly might be. Hmm. I'm not too sure. Reading more about, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And they said a 20% that, remember in 2017, there was that 20% increase on every player yeah. salary. Yeah, that was yeah. part of it to reflect the new TV deal, that sort of thing, I think. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Nice. I think even, so the salary of Catherine Morins is, what, 10 million? About that. And so even if mm-hmm. it went double that, or almost to 20 million, 8 million on one player is still. Yeah, just before yeah. a yeah. stupid amount of this salary. It'd be interesting to see if the salary cap was gone, how much that would change player wages. I think I think that would definitely stretch it in terms of um, better players getting paid higher, lower players getting paid less. That's the thing with salary caps. Even in the NBA, you see it helps the medium level of players, not like the best players, because the best players yeah, still exactly. get paid. But if there's a maximum cap, what you can pay those max players, that helps the next tier of players. Yeah come into their money. I don't think the AFL will ever, ever switch to that. I think they'll always have to have a salary cap. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And that's a good thing about The only league. sporting league really without a salary cap is soccer, really. I can't think of any much. Well, they, they have a salary cap in the um, A-League. Okay, yeah, A-League. Yeah, I meant A-League. more like yeah, Europe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, more. Oh, I yeah. see. Powerhouse. Power, yeah, yeah that's true. No, good call. Yeah. No, good Do they have a salary cap in NFL? Yeah, NFL's, yeah. yeah. And, and NFL's, NFL's got the interesting element actually where they have a well, you're not fully guaranteed the money on your contract. There's a guaranteed amount, and then right. there's a lot of incentive based stuff for the NFL because of risk for injury, that yeah. sort of thing. I'm sure That's AFL's the same though. I match think it's more guaranteed than. Actually, I'm not too sure. I don't, is, yeah. yeah, there's match payments and then bonuses and incentives and stuff like that. Yeah. I think it is more though. Um, I think it is less so than other sports. Definitely. Yeah. But if an AFL player signed a four-year deal, do they get paid out the? Or is, Okay, I'm not. Yeah, I that's, think they. That's right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think, I think they'd get paid the full contracted amounts, no matter how many games they played. To be honest, I feel like workers' rights in Australia is much stronger than yeah. it is in, say, America. Yeah, like yeah. you have much more bargaining power. As yeah. a, that's why it's yeah. so interesting. There's 51. percent Yeah, that's why I was saying. Yeah. I'm surprised the Americans have such yeah, an advantage. Okay, the second question is a guy called Bangers, a GWS fan. He the says. He's like the only He's one. one no, <laughs> <laughs> He's that guy at Spotless every week. <laughs> sorry, sorry. He's Is like, it Spotless? With He's a good yeah. poster. Yeah. I don't yeah. want to rag him, even though I just totally did. I'm ragging his team, not him. He's a top bloke. Yeah, he's cool. <laughs> um, but he asks, uh, who do you think are the most valuable players for each team? So I might, I might have a crack at this one. Uh, we don't have time to go through each team one by one and say who's their MVP mm-hmm. or the real MVP. But what I might do is just look at a few MVPs at teams where they probably disproportionately rely on a player. Because, yeah. you know, you have, you have teams that are more evenly spread. For instance, someone like Collingwood, um, you know. It's, it's hard it's to pick a best player at Collingwood. Even yeah. West Coast. But where, where someone like Richmond, um, personally, I think Dusty is very, very important to their hopes. Um, I agree with that. I'm, I'm careful how I phrase this. I'd be interested to see how Richmond would do if he had a lengthy time out of the team. 
I'm not wishing injury on him. Um, but because he's been so healthy for a number of years, yeah. um, that, that would be an interesting dynamic to me. So I think they rely on him a fair bit. Franklin to Sydney as well. I don't think many people dispute that. Cripps to Carlson is a very important player. Like, disproportionately, he is so much better than the second player at the Blues. I think we can probably all agree on that one. Mm, yes. Um, I kind of think Lockie Neal at Brisbane is going to become quite an important focal point of their midfield. Uh, mm. Just because, you know, with Beams gone, he's pretty much the main experience player. I, guess I don't Zork, see that one as much. Zorky. To be honest. I think Zork, Zorko, Rayner. I think they got it's a pretty even spread. Rain is not there yet, but yeah, he will get Jared it. Jared Berry is definitely the main man in that midfield. I think now, there's though. a big gap between still, like obviously Brady and Berry are really good talents, but yeah, maybe I, I did kind of forget Zorko, so maybe Zorko uh, instead of Neil. Um, and then five at Fremantle is one where he's, he's just so valuable to the team. Um, yeah. Although, like we said in a previous podcast, some clubs pretty metal have played better when he's out of the side, and that does happen. Even with the five thing, I remember watching the Derby JLT and the commentators, like the clearance disparity between the Eagles and the Dockers or Dick, it was like 50, mm-hmm. like 15 or something. That I'm Neil's right. also missing as well, remember? Yeah, yeah. but the commentators are all like, oh, a five was playing this clearance disparity be even. The clearance would be even. I'm just sitting there like, no, no, they wouldn't be. Five <laughs> is good, but not that. No, they wouldn't. They'd be above the Eagles. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, I think Eagles and Josh Kennedy is what separates them being top four and being like yeah. the best team. Because we, oh. uh, I don't know, because we, we played a lot of football without Josh Kennedy in the year when we had the run. With this, like, Darling emerged, which sort yeah. of mitigates that a bit, to be fair. I I'd think say. if Josh Kennedy doesn't play in the Grandy, you, didn't, you don't win it. Yeah, but you could say that about any of the top five players from that game. I was going to say, you could say that about any eagle not named Daniel Venables. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's a good call. I'm just thinking such a focal point. Um, yeah, he's one of them. And I think yeah. Darling's not as good long term on his own. Sure. But I'd say the Eagles have a very good spread between their talent rather than one focal point. So in would team. I, but I think, again, I think without Josh Kennedy, I don't necessarily think they're better than Richmond or Collingwood. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you could say that if you take out any team's best player. But, I mean, like, there's the gap that big bit of... Okay, maybe Kennedy's a fair bit ahead of the next guy, but then there's, like, McGovern and then... Yo, and then a little bit behind that is Gaff and Shuey and Yo, and yeah, um, and I mean, else. yeah, they're all important. And Nick Nat, if he's healthy and firing, but he's in and out that often, you can't really. Still, count. I still don't think any of them are as important to the Eagles as Kennedy. Yeah, okay. I I don't know. I think there's a much more even spread at the West Coast than there is at some of the other clubs. Histor- so yeah, so historically, I, I'd agree with Joyce's point. I'm just yeah. saying, I think it separates them from Richmond and Collingwood. That's having fair. Josh Kennedy. That's bloody good. It's not what separates yeah. them from being 16th. Yeah, it's yeah, what yeah. separates them from being, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Second and third. Cool. Yeah, good call. Um, okay, next question is from a guy called Throwscope. I hope I'm saying that correctly. <laughs> <laughs> that says Theodore. Like, <laughs> <laughs> this is actually your... <laughs> Matt, zoom in already. <laughs> this is your DMs. This is not our DMs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Vaney Lord, his question is, um, what? Vaney Balls, they wish man. <laughs> Which clubs could dominate with the new rules this year? Uh, Throwscope suggests that he thinks Sydney, uh, sorry, he thinks GWS and the Cats could actually do better than most people think because they're good clearance teams and under the 666 rule, um, I guess they're well suited to that. So Louis, I'll pose this one to you. Is there any teams do you think that will necessarily be much better because of the rules this year? It's a hard question because I think it'd be interesting to see how the rules, how they suit different teams. Because again, what I've kind of noticed is it lets outside runners get more of the ball and more be able to pinpoint targets. And I guess does that suit, I guess it kind of does suit clearance teams. It also suits teams that have big, tall marking forwards that be one-on-one like very good one-on-one players, so yep. it's uh, not a lot of teams out there have that good that combination of good clearance players and also you know big tall marking forwards. Um, I'd say, I mean, Eagles would be one. I mean, they, they have a pretty good mix of uh, clearance players, I think, and I guess you have Josh Candy and Darling and even uh, Liam Ryan. They're all marking players and all very good one-on-one. Really, Rioli as well. Uh, so I think they, I think it. Again, it's, yeah, I'm very, I think the rules will suit big forwards more than it will suit just really good clearance teams, is okay. my view on that. I even think it could suit teams of better ruckmen because those ruck, in more even one-on-one midfield contests, those ruckmen have a better chance to get their guys the ball with a good tap, like 
I think Melbourne, for example, could very much thrive off this rule because Max Gorn gets his guys first use, yeah. and then they've got Tom McDonald, Wiedemann as tall marking forwards. That's a good answer to my question, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Even Geelong. Is a great, oh, yeah. Yeah. Even Geelong. Yeah. Geelong, yeah. definitely. That was yeah. actually a lot of good 1v1 players yeah. in Geelong. It does seem like they've... Uh, just even that last JLT game where they played against, uh, yeah, against Essendon, they switched to, um, yeah, very kind of marking style game in mm. comparison to the first game they played against us with 119 marks and 237 kicks, which is, um, yeah, very different to their first round against us and very different to the Essendon game plan where Essendon really went a bit handball happy and tried to go through more of the corridor. So I think maybe more teams are trying to adapt that West Coast style of, again, leading big leading forwards, big one-on-one, one-on-one teams. And these, I think the rules will suit those teams. And Geelong with a Radigalia, Bleak, Bleak, I can't remember. I can never pronounce that dude's name. Black Cavs. Black Cavs. Pits what the hell? That's not a, like, no. <laughs> Blitzovs is a gun, I reckon. Yeah, but like, really again, good. him and Hawkins, and I think they have a few good one-on-one players. Yeah, um, I agree. Harry Taylor, um, Dangerfield, Ablett, all good one for you. Yeah. So I thought Adelaide yeah. might be another good one as well, I think, with um, Walk. Well, yeah, Tex hopefully having... Tex and Jenkins are two big boys. Tommy Lynch even, <laughs> even further up the ground. He's, yeah. Yeah, 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 definitely. Lynch as well. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think that's... Yeah, West Coast, Adelaide, Geelong. And Richmond have Tom Lynch as well now. Yeah, so exactly. Sort of and Jack Rewalt, yeah, yeah, Dusty Rewalt's Martin, fantastic. Trent Cotchen. Yeah. And, yeah. and yeah. outstanding crumbs around him as well. I did think with, I guess this has gone off a bit of a tangent, but it'd be interesting to see how teams with high pressure, maybe less talented, but high pressure game styles that Richmond kind of employed last couple of years and Western Bulldogs kind of employed where just lots of runners flooding and just attacking the ball once, how they'll go with these new rules um, in the space that these rules should, well, the AFL are hoping will accommodate midfielders have more space. I'm interested to see how that works. I've got a little bit of a theory about, this is a bit of a tangent, I've got a bit of a theory about the West Coast Premiership. There wasn't much good to come of it, but uh, <laughs> the, good, <laughs> the good that did come of it, I think, there was such an emphasis last year on teams trying to copycat the high-pressure Richmond Bulldogs style, and West Coast really just played their own ball game, and I think it went mm. to show you can't really copy another team's game style you more just have to play to your best assets yeah and that's something the eagles did really really well they didn't try and copy this high pressure game yeah. style that was super we saw a lot of teams trying to do it i don't like to shoot down ross Lyon, but he talked he's talked a few times about copying a hawthorne model i think maybe it would have been better if we went down the route of actually playing to Fremantle's strengths not trying to copycat another I think team, we, yeah. we really went down the Hawthorne style of kick and mark and kick and mm. mark. I think we kind of adapted that, but then to just be... I think we did innovate to it, to be fair, to... Yeah, to definitely. I mean, we players. were one of the only teams, not one of the only teams, but to play two Ruckman throughout the entire year, True. which is mm. which was pretty rare throughout the league. Yeah. Remember when we used to play four key backs? Yeah. <laughs> Schofield, McKenzie, Three Brown, Ruckman Glass. Well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dean Cox, Buddy, Lysette, and Nando at one stage as well, which is... Yeah, yeah. that's true. A bit much. But, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Oh, well, that's a good answer. Thanks, mate. Yeah, all of you, actually. Yep. Well done. Mm. Uh, Joyce, Positive vibes on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> We're having a good time. Break Joycey, down. next question we've got for you. It's from Michael Stanton, another regular. Scranton? Um, Scranton? Or? Yeah, Michael, yeah, Michael Scranton. Scranton. <laughs> yeah, done the Mifflin. Michael um, Scarn. <laughs> <laughs> he says, okay, so re- this year the AFL is introducing restrictions on, you know, umpires... Sorry, for runners um, and number of staff on the bench and stuff like that and yep. how much they can intercede with the game. Yep. Um, and he says that the coaches have kind of had resistance to this and they've kind of blasted it, but the AFL uh, seems to be quite um, particular on it. You know, they're backing it in. They're, they're yep. going to persist with this rule change. Yep. Um, why do, what, what do you think about that? Do you think, for a start, that the rule makes sense to you about restricting runners' influence? Uh, I, I can see both sides of the argument. Um, I can understand why the coaches are upset, obviously, because their influence is probably going to be less. The runners... Instantaneous. Yeah, instantaneous yeah exactly. Um, you, They're probably a lot more um, reliant. It's more moving to a cricket model where the coach and the captain um, sort of design the game plan. And when the game's actually playing out, the coach actually has very little say. It's more the captain relaying this message I think it's more moving down that role um, and I can see how that would be attractive 
looking for on-field leaders, probably yeah. a little bit more random moments, everything a little less scripted, if that makes sense. I've been kind of moving to that with the uh, interchange numbers and how they're trying to put a cap on those. To keep yeah. the, the mm-hmm. argument was to keep the best players out yeah. on the field for longer. Yeah. So I guess, it, again, it's just to keep yeah. big leaders and make it more yeah. Yeah, player initiative. Uh, I think, um, I mean, there has been a few um, uh, runner incidences in the last last yeah. couple of years there was one, one in the grand year. final it's probably a bad look um, for the game yeah in a sense um, I don't really read too much into that I think s- sometimes accidents are just going to happen and yeah I don't think that should influence rules too much but um, I don't know it's just I'm just going to have to see how it plays out I mean I guess I'm for more on field leadership from the players so in, in that sense it's I another, like it, yeah. It's another Eagles example, but I keep keep dishing them out because we go with the Eagles, um, Lewis and I. But I remember Simpson talks quite a lot uh, at West Coast about how sometimes he doesn't do a lot of coaching and yeah. he just kind of he doesn't really know what's. He, uh, I don't know if phrases. He knows what's going on out there, but he says that sometimes the leaders, you know, find that on field leaders drive a lot of the direction. I'm sure the Eagles aren't the only club that's that's yeah. like. But on Definitely. the other side of the coin, I remember Paul Ruse said the other day, I think. That young, inexperienced teams are going to be—they're going to struggle so, so much harder because they're going to have a lot of lack of direction. Yeah, and yeah. I was listening on AFL three hundred and sixty. Um, they talked about a, like a lot of the time, the runners aren't actually going out there to give players tactical messages. They're just going out to the Gold Coast guys who are eighteen, nineteen, to say, you know what, like really well done there. Like you did mm. super well. Like I think it's sometimes that's why they're easy shit. to. <laughs> Yeah. No direction, like well done, <laughs> participation. Yeah, no, with the, but, oh, um, keep going. Sorry. Yeah, no, it's not. Like, <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say, okay. but because I was going to say with the runners, at times they've been a little cheeky with them. I think, especially with these zones and stuff, they sort of like have a runner sort of protecting space. Yeah, I've heard yeah. That accusation. yeah, I've I've sort of. So it's same footage where it sort of looked like it could be plausible. Like that must be the motivation. Like yeah. the AFL, they must be trying to stamp something. Yeah. Out. That's what it is, I think. Yeah. It does, I mean, it does seem kind of in, yeah, unprofessional to have these just blokes running around the field and then you can accidentally kick them. Like, yeah, that's just, true. It, it's kind me, of a unique just like, thing. Yeah. I mean, looking yeah. at it from an outside view, you'd be like, who are these people and why are they on the yeah. field? Do you don't see that in any other sport. True. I guess it's because it's such a huge field, so many players, isn't it, as well? Yeah. It's a little less organised. Mm. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about it. I think runners, again, yeah, a pretty influential like part of the game it should be like to relay messages ac- yeah. across mm. Oof. it's yeah. not really one that has an answer we really, think really a definitive yes or no answer mm. is this the right thing so they are they did bring it in and for this season yeah, but yeah. the coaches aren't too happy about is that yeah. correct that's what yeah. we're well it makes their life yeah. a lot harder yeah. yes players are going to be wearing airpods with the coach in there yeah yeah, yeah. 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 wow yeah. Sure. Simpson quote I didn't even know what was going on out there <laughs> <laughs> he's a master coach that guy I swear yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. well actually funnily enough you guys probably didn't watch it but in the in the grand final recap the other day they said that um, in that final play where Dom Shee kicked the goal mm. Dom Sheed and Liam Ryan were both meant to be off the field at the time yeah. it was their rotation to come <laughs> off and they were both the last two people how pissed off would you be if you were trying to come off on the bench and your guy didn't come off and it's the grand it's final the grand, right last yeah. two minutes uh-huh. and, and you want to get on come on yeah. let's get off I want to be on there like, I think Venables was on the bench so like <laughs> was Chris Mastin stop laying in Venables <laughs> was Chris Mastin on the field he had four positive years something's wrong he was, yeah. <laughs> was alright who, yeah. who else was on there the vampire Doug and, Doug and Venables yeah. I remember that in the celebration Tom Cohen Tom Cole's done, mate. No, he was in terms of influential players, and they. I didn't say he wasn't. Final two minutes the grand final, but yeah, I wouldn't. And Duggan probably weren't going to be doing it. But then again, who thought Dom Shee would? Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. the king of cow. Yeah, he is king now. Cow. Give yeah. him the key. Probably already. They was. did, I think, give him the yeah. keys to the city. They gave Dean Kemp, I think, the key to the city back in '92 and '94. You get that back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dom Shee, <laughs> Dom Shee. We only have one key. Yeah. <laughs> what do you actually get for be- getting the keys to the I, city? What do you unlock with that? The keys to the mayor's <laughs> office. You do it. Awesome skeleton. Like that episode of The Simpsons. Now this this key's tricky. You gotta wiggle it. <laughs> it's just like it's, big. it's like two people just lugging it around. It's like a giant check. It's just a giant key. <laughs> Everything's bigger in cow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Who yes. told you that? <laughs> um, Tyler, your sex tape. Quick digress. Good win for the Wildcats just then. Very nice. Hey. Up two games to one. Oh, well done. Cool. 
Um, Busha. Yes, sir. Dave from the Discord asks, <laughs> which rules brought in are your favourite or least favourite brought in for this season? Ooh. I was going to say, my favourite, I, I like most of the rules, actually. Like the 666, it opens things up. I like it. Gives more one-on-ones. Mm-hmm. You get to see the base of the game go at each other a bit more. The one rule that I, I don't even dislike this rule, but I, I can see it being an interpretation nightmare is the hands in the back rule. I think that could be a bit of an interpretation yeah. nightmare. Because they say you're allowed to have your hands there to hold your ground, but you're not allowed to push. Yeah. But that's going to be a very hard thing to judge, I think, because there's a few, even in JLT, where it sort of looked a little pushy, but they were still holding their ground. Yep. It's going to be a very tough one to adjudicate, and I think... Like, even with some of the other rule changes they've tried to bring in over the past few years where they've had difficulty umpiring the AFL them. is subjective when umpiring is quite subjective in AFL compared to other sports. Yeah. It's not like if it hits your, ha- your hand, it's a handball. It's like, it's not like you X hold equals the ball y. and you keep you the to, ball for a certain length of time to be yeah. deemed handball. It's definitely... And it must be hard for the umpires with these rule changes every Same. single yeah. year. You have to drive intention as well, or like perceive. perceive yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone watching this game from just an outside point of view, be like, "What the hell is saying? It's like, why isn't that free kick? It's because oh, well, he jumped it, we got knocked down the tackle, but he picked it up and then he dragged it in. He's on the ground, but this guy landed on his back. Then he didn't give it back fast enough, so that's fifty meters. But then he was <laughs> too close. This guy ran to protect the area. There's an extra fifty meters. Yeah. You're like, what is when, going on? When I was at uni and I'd watch with exchange students, like, and you explain the rules, they'd be like, "Why?" Well, wasn't that a free kick? And they'd be like, like well, I can't actually it, explain it because, yeah. like, they did push that person in the back then, but it's just that umpire didn't mm. see it. Or That's yeah. what that's probably a factor why, like, AFL internationally is a bit dubious, like, with the, the subjectiveness nature of the rules, like, yeah. people not really understand. It's kind of like parents with the internet where they've sort of, like, learnt it, but they don't fully understand it like we do because <laughs> we've grown up with it and stuff. Like, yeah. it's sort of like that. Like, Australians have grown up with footy and have that yeah, understanding of analogy fantastic. compared to, like, As foreign excellent. people yeah. who've sort of learnt it. So they still sort of know it, but they don't, like, you yeah. know what I mean. I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. What did happen with those 100-metre free kicks of the GLT? Because it went it was oh. 50 metres and then the guys are trying to run. Yeah. Because you can sprint past oh. them now in... That's yeah, you, you can play on while it's getting measured one. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, gives yeah, a massive advantage to, to the person who receives like a hundred meters. Yeah, is a but big pretty, uh, yeah, I guess advantage. Yeah. That's yeah. one fifty to the other, basically. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. that's an interesting, definitely interesting rule. Uh, they brought in. Yeah, what other ones? <laughs> uh, Dave has also asked. Um, I'll, I'll go to you, Joyce, this time. Yep. So he says that most teams are hard to get a read on preseason. We know that. That's for certain. Uh, which team, in your opinion, is the hardest to get a read on due to things like list changes or their form last season or coaching changes or other variables? Oof. So your, your hardest team to pick, you reckon? Probably, is, probably Bombers is the, is the yeah. straight-up thought. They're very, very hyped. Um, I, I definitely don't see them as a top four. That's just my personal opinion. I don't see them as a top four team. Um, but I think... Th- they could be decent. Um, I think another good one is Brisbane. They have had a really good JLT, but every single season, a, a couple of teams go outstanding JLT or outstanding preseason, and they just don't deliver it when when it matters. An um, outstanding JLT, an outstanding NAB, an outstanding Wizard. Yeah, <laughs> I know what team. Whichever that, bank what runs it this year. Underperforming JLT. I thought all teams kind of probably gave a lot to their supporters this year. In the preseason, I think a lot of teams really disappointed. Like uh, Bulldogs lost to Gold Coast. Okay, besides that, um, <laughs> they lose to North as well. No, they they lost to St Kilda. They lost to St Kilda and Gold Coast. I'm pretty sure the Bulldogs, but they were already a bottom four team, just about. They they were a bottom four team that people thought might not be a bottom four team though. Yeah. Um, anyway, sorry, Joy. Yeah. Oh no, no. I think yeah. So Bombers. Brisbane, I think um, doggies are a little bit hard to get a read on. I um, I just had a for Adelaide, I think actually, considering the time. year they had last year compared to the year before. You don't know whether they're going to be close to the last year or the year before. They're a real tough team to peg. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm always quite conservative in my predictions. So in my head, I I just instantly think Bombers, Brisbane, Adelaide have all been overrated. Mm. Um, yeah, I feel yeah. Interesting, I'll yeah. put Adelaide separate to those. I feel like they're proven. But that's my opinion. Okay. So, fair enough. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, definitely. Quick one for you, Louis. Okay. Just a quick one. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, 
Who has the brain. most? Who has the most overrated list in the league? And this is from Flag Eagles, and uh, and the, it's a double barrel question. And then who is the first coach to get sacked this year? So firstly, overrated list in your opinion? Well, I t- I think Joyce had touched on. I think Essendon. I mean, I th- really okay. think. I mean. I think they got a little bit hyped last year and just completely fell to shit, basically. And I think they're starting to, it's just, again, the same cycle is happening again this year. I mean, Lee Matthews put him in his top four, I think, which I think is an absolute massive overreaction. Um, I don't know where they're expecting that growth to come from for their team. Um, maybe Danaher came back, but I don't think he's going to really... Shield's in, I guess. Shield's not Shield, going yeah, that yeah, he's not. And Shield yeah. might... The Shield thing might free up guys like Merritt more so, though, but he... The fact that he's there might help their other Still guys. I definitely don't think they're top yeah. four. I mean, mm-hmm. Lee Matthews isn't, you know, the old credible source of who's going to be top mm-hmm. four or not. But I think people thinking that they're going to be anywhere near the top six, I think, are, are right. Okay. No, <laughs> enough, they're Matthews. a team that could literally be like six to like 16. Yeah, I agree. Almost, yeah. Lee Maybe Matthews, not 16. Yeah. Lee Matthews, but, interestingly, yeah. said West Coast for the team he thought would disappoint in 2019. Yeah, yeah, see, there's a lot of Perth media writing on that saying, oh, people are backing against the Eagles. But if you look at Robert it... Robert Walls 2.0. Oh, yeah, I've yeah. seen that one. <laughs> Wallsy. But if you look at it, most of the predictions have the Eagles like third or fourth. Yeah. So basically... And that's still very good. That'd be a great yeah. result for us. I and think. most people don't predict the same team to win the flag the next year. No. If you yeah. ask them, it's just not yeah. going to happen. Unless they're so rich supporters. The <laughs> and there's yeah, only one true. way... When you win a premiership, there's pr- pretty much only one way to go. Like, you can't yeah. you can't actually improve. You can yeah. equal it, which is winning another premiership. It's a huge deal. Or you yeah. can go lower. Mm. If yep. you, in, in AFL, there's, there's no prize for second, like... It's yeah, not like top true. four, like so Premier League. Yeah, it's yeah. just there's no you're, relegation you're to play or for. Your last, or it doesn't make like Ricky Bobby. Yeah, Ricky Bobby, yeah. Mm. <laughs> so that's why I'm a winner. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I just yeah. think again from what I saw at Essendon during the um, JLT, they really went. I don't know. I just think again. This, I'm going back to the tall forwards thing. I just think that time and space to hit those big players is what is going to. That's going to be a big element of this season this year. The big Might boys. Be, the big boys. The big Mocky boys. Whitfield. Lean, yeah. <laughs> lean, lean from the halfback flank. <laughs> yeah. But I think from what I saw from Essendon, it was still very ha- a bit handball happy through the corridor, which is probably what Westfall kind of stuck with mm. when he's with us. A little uh, bit handsy. West Coast. Yeah, a bit handsy. So that a few other people we've mentioned coaches. on this podcast. <laughs> a few coaches. <laughs> oh, shots fired. <laughs> Ross anyway, is copping it tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of coach, oh, how do you know that? <laughs> it's around, it? Stay away from the photocopier <laughs> when Ross is around. Yeah, that's all right. I reckon Essendon got to get belted a few times this year. All right. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I agree. Oh, Essendon, not Ross Knight. Um, <laughs> so, speaking of coaches to get a sack, um, who... <laughs> <laughs> Oh. <laughs> that's that fantastic. What a segue. <laughs> I can't ban it. <laughs> no wonder we cater to the kids, apparently. <laughs> this expose has suddenly got a lot of ammo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Anyway, yeah, uh, I think. going to get sacked this year? It's got to be Alan Richardson. No, I'm not thinking that. Right. Think. That's yeah, a layup. That's, that's, that's a like, layup. I know. That's <laughs> yeah, I mean. We should probably explain it, yeah. Well, I think he's, well, he's been completely under pressure last year. I don't think St. Kilda are uh, going to. I <laughs> even enough. heard enough the... to keep him around. Yeah. I think I heard the CEO or something of St. Kilda claim that they have a top four list. And then someone was interviewing Rich and was like, if your manager thinks you have a top four list, what's that make your job prospects look like? Oh, yeah. That was, Wait, did someone say that to Rich? No, yeah. That was Jared Waitley. He said, if your CEO oh, okay. thinks you're top four, I would say he's very wrong. Yeah. 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 And where's that put you? I think he also said, where would that yeah. put you? He specifically said, if your team's yeah. list is a Definitely. top four list, oh, what's that make you? Brutal. It is a great yeah. question, though. Do you, yeah. think, do you think maybe they overachieved? Um, a few years ago, Saints. Do you th- this is a bloody I good think list. they're underachieving now. Personally. Underachieving. Yeah. 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 But not, not greatly. Just, I just think they shouldn't have slumped to the bottom four. <laughs> what about Ross Lyon? He's got to be... Uh, yeah, what, at, what's his at, contract at, length? Like, this year or two? his last year, I think. Is that, no, yeah. is that right? Or maybe a year or two. I think it's two years. Yeah, I think it's two. Yeah. It's yeah. Yeah. But you but could probably had, conceivably fire him with one left. Yeah, exactly. Deal. If he did, it, the last few seasons, if that repeated again this season... Sure, I, think if, I think if we got some of the floggings we've had 
like last like year. I think he'd year. be gone. Yeah. Yeah. During the I'm not saying I don't. I don't know if that's the right thing, but I think he would be. Yeah. Yeah. At least fifty percent of the supporter base want him gone. That's yeah. Um, even case by you're sort of somewhat happy with him. I'm a bit done with him. So that's the fifty mm. fifty. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I guess that's yeah. My conservative nature coming out again. I really don't like to get sure. rid of Definitely. coaches. So I'd really like to get give, rid of Mark give him a lot of chances. People didn't like. Yeah, I didn't like getting rid of Harvey. Mark Harvey, and that's yeah. okay. Wow. Yeah. No, it did improve. Yeah. 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 But how do you know we I wouldn't would have improved it. with Mark Harvey? You don't. But I would have done it. We made a grand final and, and we were yeah. a chance to win on the day. And as I well. guess Ross was like a renowned coach yeah. fresh off his success with Saints at this stage. Yeah. All right, HK Pig has the next question. And I think maybe we can all have a crack at this one, just short and sweet. Okay. He says, if you could take any player in the league for your respective club, who would you choose and who is the best player? So it's a kind of a two-part question. Mm-hmm. Who would you want for Fremantle or West Coast? And who is the best player in the league? I'll start with you, Joycey. Best player uh, in the league or best player of our selections? I, I interpreted that as best player in the league. Be more thorough with your questions, please. Right. Next time. We learned a lot in stat interpretation, Jesse. Good work. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah no one will get that but us. Uh, uh, joke. Uh-huh. Anyway. Nat Fife is the best player in the league. Um, if I could take any player, I guess we. now that we got Hogan, I probably wouldn't take Franklin. I'd probably take Dangerfield. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Bit of a boring answer, but mm. yeah. That's all right. Louis? Mm. For West Coast. Yeah. Oh, it's a hard one because you, you want to say Coniglio. I mean, yeah, you really do, but I think... Really? Yeah. That's I'd feel. But it's a good show. I'd, yeah, but the more I think about it now, literally <laughs> now, is that it might be good to have another player that can rotate, maybe more forward-based, I think, especially when we have Sheed, Gaff, Red, and Shuey, these kinds of inside midfield players. It might be better to have someone that can rotate across the half-forward flank and is more forward-minded, I guess. I mean, I don't want to go for like the classic like Dustin Mann or something like that, but... Um, oh, green? I think it would be really bloody good for the Eagles, actually. I think he'd be complement us perfectly, just to fit into that lacrosse role, yep. even. Because I think now this year we'd have players like Petrocelli or Oscar Allen kind of playing that kind of third up, yeah, kind of third role. But I think if we could replace that with someone more seasoned, I think that would actually be just really enhance our team. They actually probably five, even five percent. Cool. Who's the best player in the league? Oh, I hate this question, man. Like. Well, like, I, if Nat Five probably, like, he just absolutely dominates and it's just the amount of votes he gets per game is stupid, but he's always in it. So do I did base it off if he was fully fit, but then do I base it off if Gary Abbott was 10 years younger? Like, <laughs> what? No, 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 no you, uh, you got to pick him on the current age. Oh, okay. Be more. Oh, no, not so, with your question. No, 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 sorry. So who is the best of the league is regardless of age. So who's the best yeah, player? I know, yeah, I was being a jerk. Um, so right now, the best player in the league, uh, yeah, look, I don't. Oh, this is such a bloody hard question. I'll Come go, on, mate, it's Ken McCarthy. Like, Everyone knows it. I'm going to go home. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go Franklin, just be different. Oh, okay, yeah, Franklin. Yeah. I was going to say, I was struggling to decide a person to decide for our team, but while Louis was rattling off names, he picked one I quite liked. Dustin Martin, I think, would be quite nice at Fremantle because he seems to get his own ball, but he's also got a nice kick. He's got enough of an outside game to compliment Fife. He wouldn't want another bull like Cripps. Like, yep. for example, I who agree. I was thinking at one stage of Dustin would complement Fife better, I feel. Especially because he can go forward and add an element to our forward line as well. Sure. As for best player in the league, probably Fife, realistically. Okay. Yeah, for me. Um, I'm going to say Dustin Martin for both my answers. For a player, I'd want of the Eagles. Like I said, I think the Eagles are pretty well-rounded, so we're not really looking for a player of any particular type. But he's, on his, uh, as a midfielder, um, up there with top two, three mids mm-hmm. in the comp. As a forward, he's extremely dangerous, um, and the Eagles could probably just use him as a forward as well, like Richmond yeah. do. Um, and I, I see, I, I, it's a tough one. Like Fife was the best player this year, and he's better than Martin this year. But I think if Martin was played as a full-time mid like he was in 2017, I personally think he's the, the best. In my Who's just Brownlow you do you think's better, Dusty's or Fife's? That's a hard one. Fife's. Yeah, Fife's, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. Big way. Don't forget, Dusty had more team success. But I guess Freo did make the yeah, grand easier. Yeah. They, they finished first and then made it through them. Yeah. So that was pretty even. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, good call. Dustin Martin. 
Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. My interest. Interestingly, just quickly, guys, um, it, being West Coast fans, who would you pick for Fremantle, and vice versa? Who would you pick for West Coast? I like. I like. Sorry. I'm gonna okay. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you go, you go. I was going to say, I'd pick for the Eggers. I'd pick Brody Grundy or Max Gorn, actually. That's really? it. Yeah, because... It's not bad. Sure. Because Nick Nat, he's sort of like... Yeah. You can't guarantee his health sort of thing, so... It's and your rug Grundy. depth beyond that... Yeah, Grundy. Yeah. Nick Which Nat's everyone like Nick Nott. Savage. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um... <laughs> Disgusting. What do I think the Eagles, Eagles need? Oh. Eagles are very well balanced. I'm going to go with Martin again for Fremantle. I, I like his reasoning about Fife is the midfield maestro. Yeah. And then Ma- Martin, you could use more offensively. Yeah, definitely. Another one for the Eagles possibly would be like a Rory led maybe because you're half back. Like now that Joe has been moved in there, you could get get another half back guy maybe, possibly. Um, the Eagles are very close to the best back line of the league. Yeah. Like, we can go around the side. Yeah, one line. Like, I'd probably be. I'd probably pick a half forward for Eagles. I think that's maybe yeah. the only area you slightly yeah. lacking. So yeah. could even go like an Isaac Heaney or something like that. I think. Oh yeah, Gee, that'd yeah. be pretty or stinky. Again, yeah, like you said, Dustin Martin's a good shot. Age is a factor, I guess. Oh yeah, that's true. Heaney's probably now that you've mentioned Heaney, yeah. you, I could change my dusty answer for Freo to Heaney possibly with the age factor as well. Or Kelly, Josh Kelly. Or well, Kelly was another one I was well, thinking, but I think Caniglio is a good shot mm-hmm. actually. For, yeah. Yeah. It's hard to pick a good like. There's I mean, so many good midfielders to pick. In terms of how it forwards, like for Fremantle, what do we reckon, Jesse? Like a few. I, I think they could still take Buddy and like and yeah. have a lot oh, of yeah. and Buddy, and they'll be bloody amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, they probably equally need a medium forward. So yeah. someone like a Heaney. Yeah. yeah. Um, Toby yeah. Green, like you yeah. mentioned. Yeah. Especially with what they're playing, Walters is in the midfield, giving him solid midfield. Yeah. 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 That's true. Hmm. Cool. Good answers. Good answers. Good question. Um, Bruce has a question. I think this might be the second last question. Um, in terms of YouTube numbers, what is our end of year goal? So we've had a massive year. Mm. So uh, what did we say when we started? We wanted to hit a thousand subscribers. You so mentioned the number to, week. to me yesterday. I did. Well, I, I've been saying it for doesn't. a while, 10,000 by the end of this year. Mm-hmm. Um, and I set that before we've kind of exploded recently. Yep. And now, uh, according to Social Blade, we're on track to get that in like mid-November. Um, mm. But yeah, yeah, I'd say 10k. I'd be pretty happy with by the end of the year. Yep. <laughs> nice. Um, but I, I, at the moment, the way it's going, I don't think I'll be satisfied until we hit 100,000. <laughs> <laughs> Social Blade reckons within the three years. With this progression, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. What comes first, 100,000 subscribers or a Freo flag? <laughs> oh, what a question. <laughs> that could be a new uh, butt tattoo challenge for you. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I, I think uh, personally, yeah, my, my goals, I think I talked to this about you, they're actually not really subs or view based, they're more content yeah. based. So, yeah, I think we've got a long way to go in terms of doing a really professional, 100%. good quality podcast. I think we're on the way there. Mm. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of room for improvement. So that's probably my goals. Yeah. I mean, we, we have high hopes for the channel, don't we? So, you know, Definitely. eventually by the time we hit like real big numbers, because yeah. like, I feel like AFL YouTube is in its infancy. There's, there's a lot of people who start, give it a crack for a bit and then don't really take it very far. Um, other than a few exceptions. I know Caden McDonald's a pretty good YouTuber. But shout out, shout out. Oh, I think he's just upped his subs by like five people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but even again, he's different. He's he's like a vlogger, comedian, kind of AFL YouTuber. Mm-hmm. Whereas we're a little bit different. We kind of wanted to be like the True Geordie podcast when we started this, didn't we? Mm. Well, that's who inspired us. Yeah, and we didn't steal the name. What? what? <laughs> we did. YouTube's maybe something we could speak about a little bit more. We are we are based for the YouTube platform. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't really speak much about what YouTubers inspire us. and Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I definitely agree with Jesse about AFL content producers are definitely, definitely in their inf- uh, mm. in, yeah, infancy. Yeah, a lot of them are kids. Let's start. Like, yeah, that's, that's so true though. <laughs> <laughs> and that's true. Yeah, but it's just not a lot of, yeah, content being put out there. I mean, you don't go, like, I don't know. EPL and things like that just have stupid, stupid, stu- I mean, obviously yeah. they have more viewers, but stupid amounts of content that you could just spend yeah. hours upon hours upon hours upon hours of watching. Yeah. Even in the AFL, in terms of panel shows and things, you have AFL 360, 
like on the couch like there's still not a lot if you wanted to go and access more and more footage and more analysis and that kind of thing there's not honestly a lot of things you could go to that's very on true. youtube well, i think every, we have. everything is yeah. very um controlled by the afl as that's well very true they they are very much like a big brother corporation the way they operate they really and i like the fact that youtube is private it's almost like a punk rock thing like anyone can do it all you need is a mobile phone and you can upload mm. yeah and cords to wonderwall and just like <laughs> exactly <laughs> boom youtube channel <laughs> 10 hour loop Bush, what okay. goals do you have oh i'd like to see maybe get to the point where we're known enough in the afl community where we could get guests like players sort of guests that'd yeah, be something that'd be pretty good. awesome like sponsors yeah, well, yeah, the sponsors will have to come back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah. But yeah, it'd be great to get like a player on, get to ask them questions and get their perspective, and that'd be something that I'd relish. I guess fundamentally, I'd like to do this full time. That's my goal. Yeah, that's yeah. also. Yeah. And that, yeah, to do that, we have to get sponsored um, and stuff like that, and obviously improve a lot. But I feel like we're on the right track. Yeah, progression from here to this point last year, like, is pretty yeah. incredible. True. So, mm. see how we go in a year. I just want more people to recognise Jesse at Bunnings. Is yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like we should stop telling people where I work now that there's like, we've got yes. a harasser. Oh, <laughs> but anyway. Coles. Yeah. Yeah. Coles. <laughs> I work there. Um, all right, one last question, guys, and this is off topic, but Flag Eagles has said, is everyone excited for Game of Thrones? <laughs> yes, hell yeah. Yeah. We're all big Game of Thrones fans here, right? Bloody earth. I've yeah. never seen I've been, Oh, what? Oh, I didn't... I've actually never seen it. I've been re-watching them a lot because I've been doing the reruns constantly on Fox oh. lately and whenever there's nothing on, I just watch them. I've pretty much covered probably all seasons because I've finished uni and been doing bugger all the past <laughs> few months, so... <laughs> on the doll. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I'd be able to afford more shit if I was on the doll. <laughs> it's got big gold chains. <laughs> yeah. No. No, I'm not excited. I am. <laughs> Big joke. Yeah. You're more excited for Avengers, aren't you, Louis? Oh, oh no. don't, don't make me vomit. <laughs> no, I am excited for it. Cricket. Cricket's coming up, World Cup, huh? the Ashes. Yeah. yeah. Big year for sport this year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Same. We'll try and cover it all because this. Quick question, actually. What do you think about Sean Marsh defecting? Oh, yeah. yeah. I feel great about it. Thanks for bringing that back. <laughs> I know. No, yeah. That hurt me. I'm a big Sean Marsh fan. Yeah. yeah. We got boy. Boy, boy. Can't blame him, to be fair. <laughs> I don't think multiple years you can, yeah. yeah he only got one year off of yeah. the score which is pretty me. atrocious sure considering he averages 50 in the yeah. big bash yeah, and, and his brother is the captain time. as well yeah. and we finished last yeah. so we need him yes that's a bit that is a crazy decision I wonder if they'll choice Chase Stoinis back, back hopefully mm. that'd make up for everything Felipe. times 10 Lots of mind you will he come back he's at the stars they're a good side they were in the grandy mm. yeah he'd probably get more and money now yeah well, we probably get more at the stars than that. You reckon they, they've got a lot of stars yeah. to play? No pun intended, but there's a lot. There's a lot of good players in that team. Yeah, there's a lot of stars there. We, we just freaked <laughs> up uh, Sean Marsh in Melbourne. Yes, there's quite a few Melbourne stars. I like this tactic: get rid of our highest standing players so we can bring in players. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think it was the tactic. <laughs> yeah, Business. who knows? Who knows? Oh, it might have just been like a hoggy situation as well. Yeah, it's just like oh, I'm 30. That is true. And he's just like, I'm, I'll just go play. He's played for WA in Australia his whole life. Yeah. If it's true, and his international career is kind of Come to coming place. to an end, mm. uh, it's, he's probably just trying to wring as much money out as possible and yep. experience yeah. a few different teams. He's been like a WA man his whole life, hasn't he? Yeah. And Punjab. Yeah. And Punjab. And Punjab. Yeah. 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 Cool. But where's the beard? <laughs> 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 All right. Cool. All right. I think we did pretty well tonight. I'm really tired. It's 9.55. It's way past my bedtime. But um, Yeah, me too. What up, boys? Yeah. And Louis, you're getting off back to Melbourne. Back to Melbourne tomorrow yeah. for a month. So I hope yeah. you catch cool. a few games when I'm over there. Yeah, cool. You flying the helicopter over? Yeah, just taking the approach, yeah. Yeah. No, actually, yeah. Just landed in Melbourne and boy, my arm's tired. <laughs> <laughs> and the good news is, guys, Jesse will, uh, Louis will be doing a live stream from Melbourne Airport uh, yeah. when he arrives. Five percent then arrivals, yeah. It'll be live on that Facebook page. Yeah. Yep. And live video, like live vlog of the game, but of my face, so pretty close up. For they have to do that in hours. the Premier League, don't they? Do people what? who like vlog at soccer games 
I've noticed that they only fill the faces and not allowed to film the stadium. Yeah, maybe. Mm. I um, saw a good thing on Facebook of like a Scottish granddad who filmed a whole train journey and then uh, he got to the end and realised that he hadn't flipped the camera around oh, and yeah. was filming his own face <laughs> the whole way. <laughs> Classic. Yeah. Oh, like here we are, past uh, Southern <laughs> Branch. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. Next stop, Stonehenge Station. <laughs> <laughs> Platform nine and three quarters. <laughs> All right. Cool. Yeah, it's mine on, boys. Yep. We'll see you next time, guys. See, see you all. Scoop.